Wow, you guys made it to video three. You know, most people probably don't even make it this far. So thank you guys for bettering yourself, learning how to code, and sticking with my video series. That means a lot to me. Really appreciate it. This video is gonna get really juicy. We're gonna do some really cool stuff. As a forewarning, if you're new, some of this stuff might not make sense right away, and that's totally cool. What I recommend is literally just copy what I'm doing, and in the upcoming videos, we're gonna be explaining all of the details, and then you'll be able to come back and understand all this content perfectly fine. My goal in this video is just to show you how JavaScript can interact with our web page and make it dynamic and pretty and cool. <laughs> It's not really pretty. It's actually going to be pretty ugly because I'm not going to style it. <laughs> All of the content in this series is definitely super helpful, but sometimes it's hard to take these concepts and apply them to the bigger picture. How do we use JavaScript with all these other pieces of web development and how do we get a job doing web development? Well, I have a recommendation. Consider checking out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. When you attend a Dev Mountain bootcamp, you learn how to use all of these concepts and apply them to real world problems. This is a career centric bootcamp, so their goal is to help you get a job in the industry and know how to survive as a web developer. They also have content on iOS, user experience, and quality assurance. Let Dev Mountain know that I pointed you their way and they'll give you 250 bucks off the registration price. And on top of that, the housing is free. I highly recommend you try to do one of these in person, but if that's not a possibility for you guys, they also have online stuff, which will also be in the link in the description. So check it out. And now let's get back into writing JavaScript and interacting with our HTML. One of the important things with JavaScript is just understanding how things interact right? There's so many different pieces and it can be a little bit overwhelming. So this video, we're just going to be talking about how to use JavaScript to interact with some of our HTML elements. So back in our HTML file, all of these things <laughs> with the, the carrots and then the words and then the closing carrot, these are known as elements. And the one we're really going to focus on is this body element because everything we're going to do is going to be inside of this body element. So there are all kinds of HTML elements. If you put that first carrot, you can see some examples. One we're going to be using is the P, which is a paragraph. So you can use this if you want to put some text in there. We can close that P, and now we have PP. -P. <laughs> Gosh, Caleb, grow up. You're so immature. So this element has an opening tag and then a closing tag. And between these two tags, we can put the content. So let's say we're building an app where you can buy junk, and then you have to confirm your purchase. We might have something in here, like confirm purchase with a question mark. And then we might have a button that says, yes, confirm. So to make a button, you just use the button tag and then you can say confirm. So I brought the web browser up here so we don't have to continue switching windows. When we refresh, we get hello world, that's in our JavaScript. And then we have this HTML that says confirm purchase with a button that says confirm. Now with JavaScript, we can make these things actually do things, which is exciting. In order to do that, we need a way to reference these elements in JavaScript. So typically that's done with an ID. So we can say confirm. And then the button can have an ID. Let's just give it something really creative button. So now we should be able to reference these elements using these IDs confirm and button. So going back to our JavaScript, I'm going to get rid of that alert because it's annoying. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys the code to get a reference to an ID. You say document dot get element by ID. And then in parentheses, you're going to pass a string which has double quotes in the name of the element. So we're going to get button. So that's going to get the element. And then what we want to do is we want to say when we click this button, we want something to happen. So we say dot on click and in this pop-up window you can see it's a property so that's how you know if you need to put the parentheses or not in this situation we don't need parentheses so we're just going to set this equal to something basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a function so when we click this this function is executed basically we're going to make a section of code so that when you click this it's executed and you can do that with a function and it looks like this now inside of this function what we're going to do is when we click this we want to get a reference to the confirm purchase text and we want to change this to say something like order placed and then we want to get rid of the button. So we can follow a similar pattern of document dot get element by ID. Then we can pass in the other ID which was confirm and we can change this text using the property inner HTML and set that equal to order placed check email for confirmation something like that and then a semicolon at the end if you don't like the way this scrolls you guys can turn on word wrap so if you want to do that you can go to help and type in word wrap so let's try that let's save it and do a refresh when we click confirm it says order place check email for confirmation the only issue is this button still is there so we need to get rid of this button 
So what we can do is say document get element by ID and pass in the button. And then we can use a property called style, which is going to affect the CSS of this thing. This CSS is used to style the stuff. And then we could set the display of this to none, like so. It's gonna make the button disappear. So let's do a refresh, confirm. It goes away and it says order place, check email for confirmation. One thing I did wanna show you guys though, back in the index file, I have this script at the bottom. If I wanted to put that at the top here, and let's save this and do a refresh. Now, when I click confirm, nothing's happening. And you can actually see errors by going to the inspect, right clicking inspect. And I wanna get this on the bottom, so I'm gonna click these three dots and go to this button right here. Going to the console, you can see we get an error. Cannot set property on click of null. And the reason that's happening is because we're trying to reference that element, this confirm button, before it exists because our JavaScript code is being executed before we get down to this body section because this is gonna go one line at a time. So it hits our JavaScript file, goes to our JavaScript, starts executing it, tries to grab the button, nothing works because it doesn't exist yet. If you wanna fix this, you can leave it at the bottom or you can throw in a keyword here, defer do a refresh and you can see it does work. So the defer keyword allows us to asynchronously, meaning behind the scenes, grab that file. And then once everything is done loading, it's going to execute that file. There's also a keyword async, which is a little bit different because it's gonna grab that file and start executing it immediately. It's not gonna wait for everything to load, which is not what we want. We wanna use defer. So you guys can think of our application as a SPA, a single page application. <laughs> very, very limited, but basically we're, we're able to change the content of our page without changing the web address. The web address just stays index.html. And that's what's really cool because we're able to process our page really quickly because we don't have to make a request to any kind of server. You know, if we had to go to like, oh, order and then order processed. Well, all these different pages is gonna be load time. But with JavaScript, we can do all that behind the scenes. And later on, we could figure out how to make that order button actually place an order behind the scenes using what's known as asynchronous JavaScript. You may hear it as Ajax. I would say that's probably enough information for this video. Hopefully this is everything you needed to get started <laughs> manipulating HTML and JavaScript. So now that you're a pro manipulator, <laughs> be sure to check out the next video and uh, also the links in the description. Also guys, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel as that would tremendously help me out. All right, peace out.